Hello guys, welcome back. This is David. This is a class on request and this is about scale. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you some scale and demonstrate the difference between starting action, bigger action. So interestingly enough, when people start in this business, they experience a lot of single bets, lower tier casinos, a lot of lower limits. You know, you see a lot of nickels, maybe 10, maybe 15, and bets that go on. There's a few casinos in town that stay pretty busy. You'll get a lot of place bets, this kind of thing. And for the most part, here's how it breaks down. You're gonna see five, 10, maybe $15 place bets, right? Then you're gonna see a lot of double odds players. You know, may, maybe a every now and then you see a full odds player, single odds player, this kind of thing. But you don't see people really maxing out because the investment, even at a nickel game or a $10 game, is, is a bit high. And some people at these lower tier uh, casinos just don't have the kind of money to play at that level. So when it comes to place bets, for example, you'll see a lot of short money plays, especially with higher limit tables. So if you go to a lower tier game that has higher limit tables like they do now, you'll see a lot of short money plays. So for example, field bets uh, or six and eight bets, or maybe just the inside. Maybe some kind of uh, you know combat system, two point molly, but this is sort of what you see, right? So for those dealers out there, you're like kind of nodding your head. Maybe you'll see every now and then you'll see a DC player, uh, a DP player, a lot of flat bets, maybe some minimum lays, okay, small lays, not full lays, that kind of thing. Because again, we're working on smaller bankrolls. Then you end up center strip or higher end action. And the systems change, the money changes, how people bet, the context of their betting, and the allowances they make for bets change too, okay? So for example, if I have a $12 eight, and I have a player that says, press me a unit, it's gonna go to $18, right? $18, okay? If I have a different player betting at $30 and says to me, press a unit, more than likely they mean at $30, they just mean press to $60. They don't mean go up literally $6. And if someone does say something like that, I'll get some clarity for them and I'll say, excuse me, sir, uh, you mean just press, correct? And at this point, if they say press a unit, at $60, it's take one, leave one, they're going up a unit, okay? So this lesson is gonna be about a little bit of contacts and some of the betting systems and things that you'll see play out at a higher tier casino. So first of all, here's what I will tell you. Uh, for the most part, most line bets, let's say, let's pretend we're on a $2,500 and $500 game, okay? Keep in mind, people that play at this level care less about the change. They don't stay focused. You know, it's the same spread of players who really don't follow the math, right? You have, you have some players who know the math really well and know the game mechanics. You, you have other players who know the mechanics of the game and how to play, but don't really pay attention to, to the math. So for example, let's say we come out on the point in nine and I have a guy who has $75 in back uh, and you know, $2 extra change, right? Or you know, or they're just leaving $75 that they could care less. They're losing out on 50 cents. No one cares. So if you sit there and tell them, hey, you know, add another dollar or make that an even amount, they're going to look at you like, you know, why are you telling me this? Like no one, no one really cares because all they're really missing out on is 50 cents and a player at this level probably doesn't care about 50 cents. And again, so then you'll see people who absolutely max out the odds and who look to create plays for themselves. So by that I mean this. If there if this is a hundred dollar table, okay, and you have full laws, in that case of four hundred dollars, they may look at expanding beyond the table minimum, right? Or you know, the table maximum. Okay. So you'll see a little bit more of this. So here we have 400 odds and then a three dollar place bet on the line if they understand the mechanics. If they don't understand the mechanics, they may just try and push it up there onto their odds. And then you at your casino will have to determine sort of how that's handled. Some casinos, not many, enforce this max odds done, okay? So you can only go max odds. Other casinos, it's two times the number, and then you would go ahead and fix that onto uh, it's playing as a place bet. Now, I typically won't move the checks. For me, I would just call out checks play to table limit, 
And then um, once I get around to that, I would see what the table limit is. Obviously, they can do 400 on 3, 4, 5 game. And then I would move that on to a place bet on the line with whatever checks up to whatever the table limit was. And here, we have a $100 table. So you can only have $100 uh, more dollars. So if it's a $100 limit, um, this would be the only place that they could have, and then these $200 would be changed, okay? I tend not to interact with the checks, or I interact with the checks as little as possible during a hand. Uh, once the hand is resolved, then I interact with the checks, and it will go out there. Now remember, if it's a seven out, and I'm moving this money in, okay, and this person did have these checks on, I would go four, one, push this money off. That'd be the only money at risk, okay? And then, of course, coming over here to our purple player and take that, okay? Wouldn't have a purple player because it's a $100 limit, uh, but I'm just giving you examples as we go around, all right? So here, let's, let's scroll this back a little bit and uh, go over there. All right, so let's say I have, more reasonably speaking, a $1,000 game, okay? And I have a couple different players. I have a $25 player. I have a uh, $75 player, a $100, table, a $100 player, and a $1,000 player, okay? Again, I'm on a three, four, five table. I'm dealing on the strip. The point comes out to nine, all right? I have a player here who wants to play, let's say, you know, whatever they want to play for odds. They put down that, and they call it a day. Uh, again, I don't, I don't need to play with the money. I don't need to do with it uh, much. I just know that it plays and just let it go, okay? Uh, I really don't care if it's an odd or even unit. I've given up having those discussions ever since my first three break-in jobs because you know, once you get to scale, nobody cares about the 50 cents. So if that's all you're saving them, it's not a big deal, okay? Now the next player goes here, and let's say, hey, he wants to put an extra dollar. I know what the extra dollar pays. What does it pay? It pays 139 or 140 for the one because I got that one figured out because I've addressed it a few times, okay? Again, I'm on a $1,000 table, and now what am I going to do? I got another player there who wants some odds, throws in. Let's say he throws in. $500 check, and he's like, you know, I'd like some odds. Now, again, I go out, and I really don't even ask. I set them up with max odds. I give them their change, push off the change, set up the max odds, and then let them do what they want with it. I try to limit my conversation and limit my interaction as much as possible. I want to move on. I want to be helpful to the player, but at the same time, just sort of create the opportunity that they may want, and then from there, they can do what they want with it. Next up, I got a $1,000 player. $1,000 player, boom. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go all in. Checks play, sir. Fantastic. Okay. Now, in this case, I might have a box where a supervisor tells me, hey, run that down, see what he has out there. And in that case, I'm going to go out and do it. But other than that, I'm going to tell the player, sir, checks play. Now, if I'm at a three, four, five table, they have $1,000 a line, they can go to $4,000 odds and they can go with a $1,000 place bet. So that could be up to $5,000 and good to go, not worried about it. And which it looks like it is, give or take maybe a check or so, but it looks like uh, they got things squared away. And if not, again, I'll just let them play. I'll just tell the player, checks play to table limit. You got two ways to number, sir. You can go 4,000 odds, $1,000 on the line. And if my supervisor has me break it down, there you go, bam, got plenty of money got no problem. So I got four and five hundred dollars on the line. Again, I typically don't interact with the checks or I interact with the checks as little as possible and wait until it's paid. So let's see sort of how we're going to go out and pay this. All right. Uh, here, real simple. 